Daycare workers. What is the shocking family secret that you've been told by a three-year-old? Story one. Not a daycare worker, but I used to have a tax practice. A client came into my office to drop off his tax paperwork with his five kids ages three through ten in tow. He said he needed to go run an errand and left, leaving the kids in my office for me to babysit while I worked on his taxes. The kids were shy, quiet, and well-behaved, but the youngest finally started a conversation with me. My daddy hits my mommy. Story 2. With a group of three-year-olds, we were coloring paper ties for Father's Day and talking about what their dads like to do. As the kids were calling out their dad's hobbies, one little girl had an epiphany. She gasped and shouted in excitement, I have a dad! She had recently been adopted by her foster parents. Story 3. This isn't exactly scandalous. The shocking things I have heard usually involve abuse. We had a family from Texas move to the daycare I worked at in Illinois. The boy would try and tell us stories, but we could never get fully all the details for them to make sense. It would usually go like this. Boy. Do you know who's bad? Me. Who's bad? Boy. The black man. Me. Who? Boy. The black man is bad. He hurts people. Me. What man? Why does he hurt people? Boy. The black man. He's scary. After a few weeks of this, the boy was the one to always bring the black man topic up, I finally was able to discover that the black man was Darth Vader. I had assumed that perhaps this southern family had a streak of racism, but it just turned out that I was prejudiced against southerners. Story 4. Not sure if this counts. Wife runs one. Had a day off from work and a six-year-old sits on the table next to me and we start talking about different fish in the world. His parents were divorced, so they had split custody. He and his sister only come part-time, so I grab my phone and look up different tropical fish and whatnot. After a bit, he tells me that he only likes his mom and sister and hates his dad, stepmom, and stepbrother. Talks about how he's going to light his dad's house on fire with the people he still hates in it. I told his stepmom about it when she came to pick him up. He went to therapy for a while. His real mom gets a new live-in boyfriend every month or so. Apparently one has given him swirlies a few times and another was a convicted child monster. The dad reports this mess to the Child Protective Services, but they never do anything about it. Story 5. Not really a shocking secret, but it got a laugh out of me. I had preschoolers rounded up for circle time. Going off their interests of the day, I decided to ask everyone who was a boy and who was a girl, since that happened to be the one thing every three-year-old cared about that day. Through the sea of children, I hear a couple responses, I'm a boy, I'm a girl, etc. Then, out of nowhere, all the way in the back, I hear, I'm black. He sure was. God, I miss that class. Good times. Story 6. I once had Child Protective Services called on my parents because I told my daycare worker there was nothing to eat and I was starving. True story was my mom hadn't had time to go get groceries and asked my dad to go before I left for daycare, saying something like, could you pick up the groceries? I don't want her to starve for another day tomorrow. I actually had breakfast that morning, but not the usual, and refused to eat it all. I never saw my mom so embarrassed ever again. My husband and I went on vacation for a week and left my then kindergartner with my MIL. The small weirdo was caught eating dog food out of a sandwich baggie on the playground during recess literally 12 hours after we left. His excuse to the teachers? Grandma won't feed me. His excuse to his grandma, the dogs like it a lot so I wanted to try it. Thank everything holy the teachers knew us and grandma. No scary child protective services calls were made and everyone, save for grandma, had a good laugh. Grandma locked up the dog food until we came back. Story 7 When my son was three, I bought my wife Titanic on video, yes it was a long time ago, for her birthday. He asked if we could watch it after nursery school. We said that it wasn't really a film for children and it was a film for grown-ups like mommy and daddy. When I picked him up later, his nursery teacher was stifling her laughter as he had been telling everyone all day that it was his mummy's birthday and that daddy had bought mummy a special video that only mummies and daddies could watch. Story 8. I don't know if this counts, but a three-year-old told me that he had belly aches every day because mommy gave him too much sleep juice. I said, what's that? I brought it up to her, and she said like it was all normal and fine, even with a little laugh. Oh yeah, sometimes I just give him a little bit too much NyQuil because the little sh doesn't sleep. And I was like, um, no child that age should have any NyQuil. She laughed it off and said, oh, he's been getting it since he was a year old. Nothing bad has happened. And on top of that, the kid always comes in smelling like strong Child Protective Services was called. Story 9. 
I once had a little girl tell me that she saw daddy licking mommy like a doggy. That was hilarious and awkward. There were a handful of really sad cases where children would disclose neglect or abuse. One girl in particular had a meltdown one day when she had an accident in her underwear. Turned out that her mom would just slap her around just gently enough to not leave a mark and lock her in a closet when she misbehaved, which included accidents. Needless to say, we reported her mother to Child Protective Services and we did a rush job washing the girl's clothing so she could go home in the same clothes she wore to school without her mom knowing about the accident. Lots of kids spilling the beans on new pregnancies or divorces, arguments between their parents or infidelity. Kids see and hear a lot and they tend to have an incredibly good memory of that kind of stuff. Story 10. I dated a girl with two kids. I was watching them while she went to the doctor. She had a serious medical problem and she wanted the kids to not be there and see her all stressed out. Was watching Toy Story with her three-year-old daughter. I guess the daughter started understanding that her mother and I are more than friends. She said, would you hit mama? I was shocked and I said, of course not. What put that idea in your head? And she teared up and said, my daddy used to hit her. And she started crying. I just did my best, and I explained to her that I would never hurt any of them, and how people who love each other should behave, and that her dad had a sickness that caused him to act strangely. He was an addict. I got her a popsicle, and she calmed down as Buzz Lightyear and Woody were flying into the car. I was aware that her dad hit their mom, but I didn't know if the daughter had witnessed it or would even remember. You're a good man. Story 11 my grandma owns a home daycare and a female toddler that she babysat decided to try and pull down a male toddler's pants and kiss his pee-pee. My grandma immediately asked where she learned it from. She said, my daddy. My grandma reported it and an investigation was done. And her family was actually very grateful that she did it, even her dad. An investigation was done and they found nothing wrong and the parents 100% cooperated. Kids sometimes just say odd things, but they were glad to know that my grandma takes those sort of things seriously. So I guess it's not a family secret, but my grandma certainly thought it could have been at the time. Story 12. They tell me everything. If you lie to your daycare worker, your child will spill the beans. I have lots of three-year-olds struggling with potty training. Every single parent will tell me they're working with their child at home. Your kid will tell me if that's true or if you're just putting them in diapers as soon as you get home. The biggest thing I've been told, one little girl mentions how her grandma tries to breastfeed her. Her grandma picked her up every day from daycare and had just about the whole afternoon with her, alone. We called parents and CPS, an investigation was done and the grandma admitted to holding her like she was nursing but claimed that they were just cuddling. From my conversation with the little one, it sounded like it was definitely going on. She was really, really detailed for an almost three-year-old. Grandma walked away unscathed and still picks up the little girl from daycare regularly. Story 13. I worked at a gym childcare center in high school and a pair of four-year-old twins, one who appeared to be mentally disabled, with an older sister came in. Not three-year-olds, but not very old. The little boy had all these weird scars all over his arms and legs like old cut marks healed over. The older girl, maybe five or six, noticed me looking and calmly explained that it was from when his twin sister had gone after him with a knife and rolled up her sleeves to show me that she had the same marks all over her arms. Apparently the younger girl had serious issues and her parents apologized for not warning me when they came to pick her up. Never saw them again. The creepiest little girl I've ever seen. Enjoying the video? If you are, like and subscribe. It really means a lot and means we can keep making these. Anyway, back to the stories. Story 14. Oh my, I can't believe this isn't one of the first ones that popped into my head. There was a little girl and a boy, about three and one. They were in foster care and had great foster parents. Well, they would get picked up about once a week by a social worker and taken to their parents for visits. Well, one time when they came back from the first unsupervised visit, the little one-year-old started breathing really heavily and raspy and then all of a sudden barely breathing at all. We think it may have been an allergic reaction to something. Of course, we call an ambulance. Then, not even 10 minutes after he's off to the hospital, it happens to the little 3-year-old. But she starts throwing up and then not being able to breathe. So we're all like, okay, what the hell is going on? The owner goes to the hospital with the kids and calls later to let us know what's going on. Turns out the real parents poisoned both of the kids. They turned out okay. The little boy had a lot more in his system and was in the hospital for a few months. But overall, everything went back to normal. Needless to say, the parents went to prison. 
Their reason for doing it was because if they couldn't have them, then no one else was raising them. Which made no sense because they were fairly close to getting them back. You never know how awful some parents can be until you work in childcare. Story 15. Not a daycare teacher, but a parent. The little one was about three and a half when I get a very serious phone call from her daycare to come in and talk about a comment my child had made, jump in the car and zoom there as quickly as I could. And there's already a police car there. We get into the office to talk about what's happening. My child had told her teacher that the marks on her chest and back were from when I beat her. The police officer looks at me and tells me this is very serious, and I'm just about to burst into tears because I can't imagine why my beautiful daughter would say such a thing. And then I remembered what was actually on her chest and back, and burst out laughing like a maniac. My daughter had hives from an allergic reaction a couple of days before, and they were still slightly visible. Even with the cortisone cream and antihistamines we were prescribed by the doctor, had to explain that I never beat my child and she had thought that because she had hives it means that bees had been living in her. And by having to take medicine and having a special cream that I was beeing her to get rid of all the bees. The police officer had a good giggle and the daycare teacher looked like she had just swallowed some lemons when I pointed out that only hours before I had just handed her all the proper documents. Doctor's note, description of the allergy, allergy plan, etc. Along with the bag of cream and medication for the hives. Story 16. I taught the toddlers, but as the day wound down and the number of kids in the building dropped, they would slowly all trickle into one room for playtime and basically wait to be picked up. I was the teacher in charge of the end of the day playroom as well. There were two 11 year old twins who were constantly happy, outgoing rays of sunshine. One day, they just weren't. I asked them if dinner was okay. Apparently, over the weekend, their family had gone out to dinner and a movie. Took about three to four hours. When they returned, their house was a bloodbath. Apparently, their three dogs had gotten into a fight, which resulted in one dog dying. The girl walked in on the two surviving dogs, covered in blood and eating the third dog. Apparently, their parents enrolled them in therapy almost immediately, and it seemed to help a lot. Story 17. I'm putting together a book for my kiddo for when she graduates high school called Text from Daycare. I've taken screenshots of all the texts I would get throughout the five years that she was there. Once I was giving her a bath, I think she was about three, and she wanted to use my body wash. I must not have rinsed the washcloth well enough when I cleaned her privates. It burned and I felt so bad. I texted daycare, her daycare provider is a friend of mine who I've known since kindergarten, that night to let her know what happened because I knew she would say, mommy burns my hoo-ha. The text I got the next day could only be described as epic. She said something like, Mommy used her soap in my hoo-ha and it burned and I cried. But I told Mommy I know she didn't mean it, but don't ever use that burn soap again. I watched TV and I stopped crying, but then I cried again because I had hot pee and my Mommy felt really bad, so I said no more burn soap. If I weren't so close to my daycare provider, that could have ended up very badly. Possibly with a visit from the Department of Children and Families. Another fun note, the daycare provider was driving and said a bad word. Apologized right away and my kid pipes up from the back seat. That's okay, mommy says that word all the time. And she says heck to the cat. I do, that cat is a freaking mess. Story 18. Not necessarily a secret, but I caught a young boy and girl playing doctor and checking out each other's nether regions behind a bookcase. Apparently, it's somewhat normal for them to be curious, but wow, I was surprised. <laughs> I remember being around 9 or 10 and playing with a friend of mine. And one of my neighbor boys, we didn't know him well, but I was one of the few kids with a trampoline in the area, so I got random visitors now and then. We were in the backyard, pretty secluded, when he told us, two girls, that he could make his willy stand up. Of course, neither I or my friends believed him, so he made us promise not to tell on him, took off his pants, and tried to make it stand. Stood there for a good half minute until he said he couldn't do it right now, which my friend and I obviously took as confirmation that he was full of crap. No way you can make a willy stand up, right? I was actually in my late teens slash early 20s when I realized what he was talking about. Story 19. Not a daycare worker, but I've done a lot of babysitting. When I was 15, I watched a 7-year-old whose mother worked with mine. Mom was a secretary, and the little girl's mom was an advanced practice registered nurse, APRN. I liked the kid. She was a smart girl, and I liked her mom. Anyway, one day the girl tells me that her mom's name isn't her real name, that she made it up for work, and it was like having a new mommy. I had no idea what the heck that meant, so I tried to ask more questions, but I didn't get very far, so I don't think the little girl really had an idea what was actually going on. 
She did tell me her mom's real name, though, so I asked my mom about it. She didn't know either. She was curious, so she asked a couple of people at work. Turns out the woman I was babysitting for had somehow faked everything. Her name, identification, degree, and work history. She was not an APRN. She had no degree. Her real name was not the name she'd been given. It was freaking crazy. Nobody had any idea how she did it. How she managed to fake her way through the job with no goddamn training. The office they worked at was a fairly large one and well-respected office in Connecticut. She was obviously fired and I no longer had my babysitting job. Story 20. So I work in a day nursery for about four or so years, and I will never forget the day a three-year-old outed her mom and dad for having a sex swing in their bedroom. By drawing a pretty graphic picture of the swing and her mommy laying back in it and her daddy kneeling down in front of her. We reported it to management because of the policies and procedures, but my lord, I had to leave the room and laugh right before it imploded. The same child, maybe three or four days later, pipes up during a conversation about religion. It was around Christmas time, so we were covering what religions have what festivals and gods, etc. She announces that her mummy loves God very much and she prays to him a lot at night. Without even thinking, we asked how does she pray? She responded by making sex moans and saying, Oh my god, oh god, oh god, oh god, yes I'm so close. And she thought that it was sweet because she felt close to God. I miss this kid. Story 21. Taught pre-K for about 12 years. Had this kid that was crouching behind a bookcase. Upon closer inspection, he had a gum wrapper and the contents for a pencil sharpener and was rolling a joint. Had a kid tell me that his mom had a secret and he wanted to share it with me. He then told me about their roach problem and how he's not supposed to talk about it at school. That one made me laugh. Had a few kids over the years disclose some abuse. Child services got called with those. Kids tell everything. I know that your marriage isn't working out, your finances are, and even if you have loud sex, kids will tell it all. Story 22. I asked this question to my son's preschool teacher one day. She said one day it was story time and all the kids were sitting in a circle on the reading rug. She was reading them a book about animals and the sounds each one makes. An owl comes up and none of them know it, so she says, It's an owl and they make the sound hoo hoo. A kid declared, ooh, my mom makes that sound when mom and dad are having private time in their room. Story 23. I work with autistic kids. I work with one toddler mostly. He's low functioning and we're building language with him. One day he was with my supervisor. The kid picks up a thing of post-it notes, drops it, and then says in a whisper, damn it. In a family meeting, my supervisor told the kid's mom about this and we all laughed because he said damn it in the correct way instead of just saying it over and over. The mom couldn't stop laughing but agreed to try and watch her language when her son is near. Story 24. Wife works at a church on Mother's Day out. To get the job, she had to literally write a paper about how she found Jesus and how super close they were. All the women up there were super religious and judgmental about how evil the world is. The other day she's changing an 18 month old's diaper and found some weed that had come out of a grinder. I imagine that the parents must have tipped it over and missed a little bit while cleaning up and the kid managed to sit in it, which clung to the edge of the diaper. The mom actually works up there and is constantly complaining about the damned liberals destroying America. Story 25. I had a student in my class, age 3, who was constantly dropped off by his barefoot mom without any underwear. Granted, he was completely potty trained, so it wasn't a huge deal, so I just figured that they were just hippies. So one day we're coloring and talking about superheroes and punching comes up. My mommy punches me. To which I responded, you mean like this? And he gave a light friendly nudge like, hey you, and he shook his head. No, like this. And he slams his fist down on the table. So I told him it was a good thing he told me and asked for a substitute to take a potty time, which was code for, I need help from a senior employee. If you actually needed to pee, you use the term potty break. My manager met me in the front office and we filed a complaint with Child Protective Services. Unfortunately, I gave birth about a week later and never returned. So I don't know what became of him. Story 26. I used to do applied behavior analysis therapy with little kids who have autism spectrum disorder. With one kid, we were doing some pretend play. We were playing restaurant and I was the waiter while the kid was the customer. I asked her what she wanted to order and she ordered pasta. I asked her if she wanted to have a drink with that, maybe some water or juice. She said, oh, I'm the mummy so I'll have the white wine please. Terribly cute and we got a little blush out of the girl's mom when I told her later on. 
Story 27. My niece's mother is a bit of a hoe. She and my brother broke up when she was pregnant because he wasn't sure the baby was his and walked out of everyone's lives. After around five years later, she shows up pregnant again and asking for child support and for my brother to be involved in the girl's life. Once the paternity test came back, that's what happened. While my brother was watching her, my niece said something about, My sister won't have to wait for her daddy as I did. She's got a lot of daddies. 